Hi, my name is Annabelle and this is what I've learned from 30 days of doing homework for life. Now, homework for life is actually an exercise by Matthew Dix, who is the author of the book Story Wordy, where you would kind of take five minutes every day to write down a story wordy moment of the day. And I've been doing this for a total of about a month, and <coughs> which I will link in the description down below of my vlog and what I've been writing. I've been thinking about transferring it over to Instagram just the way I've designed it, but we'll see. I just wanted to explain how I did it, um, my favorite stories that came out of last month, and what I've learned from this exercise. So number one, I actually focused on one thing I want to remember every single day. Now Matthew Dix actually talked about this in his book where sometimes you could have multiple story worthy moments in a day but I decided to focus on only one just because it's easier for me uh, and once I found that story, I would write a really short paragraph or sometimes a few paragraphs about that moment. And I try really hard to incorporate the concepts from the book. So like introducing the elephant in the room really early on, uh, creating suspense, anchoring people in a location and trying to use words like buts and therefore and avoiding the word and. Number two, I will ask myself these questions when I think about what my story worthy moment of the day is. Was there something that made me change my perspective on something? Was there something that made me feel like I would do things differently? Uh, number three, what do I want to remember from this day? What would I want to tell my friend or how would I tell this story to my friend? Now for me, the first two questions are the most important questions to me because sometimes when we think about our day, there are many things that we want to remember, like this joke that our friend told us or something really nice that my husband said to me. But I prioritize experiences that changes my viewpoint on the world and how I live my life. Top stories. This could very much be, in a way, my favorite moments of last month. Now, number one uh, is this story called Reconciliation and this happened really early on, it's the second day. And Reconciliation is a moment where my friend uh, gave a Bible class that day and he talked a little bit about Reconciliation. At the end of that Bible class, a few of us actually stayed back and we were still <laughs> lingering on in the Zoom call and I took that moment to talk to my friends about these are things that you have done that kind of upset me and this is kind of, kind of how I felt about the situation and what happened that day and it was really hard for me because I'm not someone who does that I am generally someone who sweeps things under the rug and to have that moment of reconciliation where I could talk about my feelings and where my friends said it's okay <coughs> and they are totally fine with it at the end of the day it was just insane and amazing so yeah it was a really amazing moment for me a story called desserts over vaccine and this happened on the 17th of june so this was the moment where uh it was actually a day the day that i got my second dose of my vaccine and you know there's this com there's this trend where people are actually posting you know their shot vaccines on instagram on facebook and showing people that i got the shot and i got the shot after i got my vaccine i actually called up a friend and he just completed his exams and i got my vaccine so i was like hey let's go out let's celebrate let's get dessert and we did and he was really funny because he every dessert stop we would go he would just go to the next one and buy more things and i'm like this is insane like the amount of desserts they were buying and he's like you only live once and it was just really funny how uh something that i expected to be a one-stop thing or something that i just wanted to go to one ice cream store ended up going to three different stores and buying 10 different things in each store as if we were preparing for the apocalypse but preparing with desserts so it was just really funny how like the day it i it's funny to me that despite the fact almost getting vaccinated is what would be considered as the most important thing in someone's life for me having desserts with my friend and driving around and dessert hopping was more fun to me 
and that will be the thing that I want to remember more. Chinese medicine and pregnancy. So this is a day where I was shooting Chinese herbs for our Chinese medicine department and as a reward, one of the Chinese medicine practitioner told me that you can touch my belly because that would help you get pregnant as some old, old folks tale said. And I wasn't... And the first question I asked her was, you know, was it a boy or was it a girl? And she said, oh, it was a girl. And I was like, oh, okay. And suddenly she just grabbed my hand and placed it on her belly. And then she was like, yeah, touch it. <laughs> It gave you luck and she was just telling me these stories about people who touched bellies and got pregnant those kind of stories and it freaked me out because it's like i thought that i really wanted a boy as my first kid and i thought that touching a belly with a girl mean i'm most likely i'm gonna get a girl with that, with that kind of mindset but it it made me realize that already before my kid was even born i could already be disappointed because his or her gender was wrong and I felt that that was just a horrible mindset to have and helped me realize that I don't want to be disappointed in my child so early and I needed to realize I, I realized that I needed to let go of these expectations and love my child no matter what even if it's a boy or a girl so it was just that moment of realization and also just the really funny thing of touching almost what I would consider a stranger's belly um, it was just a really interesting moment. So 60 cents is a story where I am generally would be what you would consider like an eco warrior. And I would, when I go to places, I would actually bring my own containers to fill so that I don't have to waste uh, more plastic and containers. And this guy who I was, who I, who, who I brought my containers to, he, he gave me a discount because I brought my own containers. And I was really confused because normally that doesn't really happen that often except for like maybe starbucks who will give me like a few ring a few ring of discount and stuff like that but this guy was just like a roadside store man and with the problems in malaysia where like people are struggling to survive i was just surprised that he would give me a discount when like if i could pay the full price of it and i wouldn't even have mind but he gave me the discount and i was just shocked at his integrity and his honesty in like not charging me for things that i'm not going to be paying for and i was also really surprised that i even took the discount i should have just insisted like no just take the money but i didn't so it was just a really good reminder that when people it was just an amazing reminder that even though i had so much i was not willing to give yet someone who may not have as much was willing to give and i thought that was just it was just a really good reminder for me my the last story that i really want to talk about is actually this story called curtains so this one was just a really funny story of like how um my husband injured himself while doing a specific chore that i wanted him to do and it just whenever i think about it i just laugh because it's just ridiculous and hilarious at the same time but it helped me remember that these are the moments between the two of us where despite the fact he is sometimes ridiculous and he's up to a lot of shenanigans like these are the moments between the two of us that I really treasure and cherish because we don't have kids yet and these moments that are just us are moments that I really enjoy so yeah so what I've learned is that the best moments in my life for the past month is that number one, it always involves other people it, it is whether what they say or what they do that really surprises me and like amazes me and these are the moments which changes my perspective on certain things or changes my mind change my mind on certain things uh, number two is that a lot of the best moments in my life are just unexpected you know suddenly randomly touching <coughs> someone's pregnant belly or the 60 cent story or desserts or these are just all these things are generally things that surprised me and were just unexpected the best moments in my life are actually moments where i would face <coughs> my fears where i would do something that i feel that i'm truly afraid of and last one the one some of the best moments of my life are just not my accomplishments during these moments like if i finished a project didn't provide me as much satisfaction as seeing my friend treat a stranger for lunch for example 
And this helped me realize that as much as a large portion of my life is doing things, sometimes I need to focus on my relationships with other people because essentially my relationships with other people and how I interact with other people are the best moments of my life <laughs> instead of actually accomplishing things. So yeah. So these are kind of just my takeaways and my experiences in doing these exercises for a month or so. And during the time of COVID, it's actually really hard. I find it really hard to get stories because I don't interact with people as much. However, it's important to remind myself to write a good story. It's not to live an extraordinary life, but to see life as extraordinary. So it has been a really good exercise, almost like a gratitude journal in a way. And I'm gonna continue writing every day. You can read about it if you want to. And I hope you find your story-worthy moments in life. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.